Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 94 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing well. At the time of recording this episode, it's still winter, it's still the end of February, and there have been storms and there has been bad weather where I live. But when you listen to this episode, it will actually be the first day of spring. So I'm excited that spring is coming and I hope you're excited for this new season as well. And actually in this episode, we're gonna talk about spring today. This is the topic of today's episode, so I chose a relevant one for today. Uh, Before we start, though, remember that if you want my specialized training, if you want my help to improve your English and to understand native speakers, then make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time member or any of the higher tiers of my membership and you'll get my listening practice seminars where I help you train with the sound system of American English so you can understand native speakers more easily and also improve your own pronunciation. And if you want my advanced podcast episodes, then become a Listening Time family member or VIP and you'll get two new advanced episodes every month where I speak at normal speed, so you'll have the chance to practice with real English. And if you want to ask me questions regarding English or language learning, then become a Listening Time VIP, and you can ask me questions every week, and I'll answer those questions in a video Q&A session. So if you're interested in that, click on the link in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And remember to follow me on Facebook because I post a lot of English content on there and I do live sessions. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, good stuff for you there and it's all for free. So just click on the link in the episode description to follow me on Facebook as well. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about spring today. This episode will put you in the spring mindset and get you ready for this new season. Uh, Remember that you have the transcript available for this episode. That's also in the description. So go down and click on that if you need it. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about spring. So this year, spring begins on March 20th, 2023, which is today. Not for me, because I'm recording this in February, but it will be uh, today when you actually listen to this uh, podcast episode. So let's first talk about what spring represents, okay? So I think the first thing that comes to mind for me when I think of spring is I think of life, right? And it's very apparent when you look outside during spring that there's uh, a lot of uh, life and vitality and uh, new things, right, Uh, in terms of nature and things like that. So, for example... The flowers bloom in spring. In English, when we say that something blooms, this means that a flower, we usually use this with flowers, uh, actually becomes a flower, if you know what I mean. It actually becomes the uh, full uh, image of a flower that we have in our minds. I'm not great at describing things related to flowers or plants because I don't know much about this, but you get my point, 
right? Flowers bloom in the spring. So we see uh, that life in the flowers, of course, and the leaves return to the trees because uh, usually during winter, a lot of leaves fall off the trees. So the trees are bare, as we might say. Uh, this means that they don't have anything on them. They're bare. So during the winter, the trees can become bare. And uh, for some people, it might look a little bit ugly, right? Because there's nothing on them. Uh, but during spring, the leaves return and the trees look alive again and they start to uh, regain their normal appearance. And one of the coolest things about spring is the colors, right? The colors, uh, depending on where you live, uh, can be very different in the spring than they are in other seasons. So a lot of times you can see pink and yellow and orange and purple and all kinds of interesting colors start to uh, appear all around you during this season. And I personally think this is really cool. I like to see all the different colors. Uh, I like that image. Uh, this is a very nice time of year uh, for that reason alone, I think. Uh, and all of these things like flowers and leaves and the colors and all of that, they all kind of make you think of life, right? When you look outside the window during this season. And uh, this also makes sense that we attribute this uh, characteristic of life to the season of spring because, of course, this is also the season when we have Easter, right? In many countries, Easter is celebrated, and the reason uh, for Easter is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? Coming back to life. And so the whole season itself is related to life. It's related to um, uh, uh, rejuvenation, right? It's related to uh, renewal, all of those things. And I think that spring also represents new beginnings for a lot of people. I think uh, when people see all of the changes outside, they see um, the colors become bright and the leaves return and the flowers bloom, people kind of feel like they have uh, another beginning, right? Another opportunity that year. Um, things are new and fresh. So I think that a lot of people um, associate spring with new beginnings because we tend to think of it as the first season of the year as well, right? We usually say spring, summer, autumn, winter. Of course, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, then this will be the opposite, right? But I live in the Northern Hemisphere, and for us, uh, we usually think of spring as the first season, uh, even though in January it's still winter, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, people associate spring with new beginnings, and I think some people think of spring as um, the point after the hardest time because winter is usually uh, the time when people uh, struggle the most in terms of their physical environment, right? If you live in a place that has extreme weather, then winter always gives you the most problems. It gives you um, the, the most challenges, right, compared to other seasons. And so when spring finally comes, it kind of feels like that you have already uh, passed through the hardest time. And in English and probably in a lot of languages, we also use the word winter in a figurative sense uh, to talk about a difficult time, right? Getting through the winter, right? That's associated with getting through a hard time. And for me personally, 
I also agree with this because as you probably know by now, I don't like uh, the cold weather or extreme weather. And so when spring finally comes, uh, to me, it feels like I've gotten through the hardest time of the year. And now uh, the next eight months or so are gonna be nice. So I definitely feel like that as well. So let me talk a little bit about spring in some of the different places where I've lived. So let me talk about spring in San Diego first. That's where I live now. So here in spring, everything is green. And this is significant because San Diego isn't necessarily the greenest city. Uh, it's actually kind of like a desert here. It's pretty dry. It's not a complete desert, of course, but it's closer to a desert than it is to forest, let's say, right? We have more desert-like weather. And so in spring, what's interesting is we have uh, the opportunity to see green everywhere. At other times throughout the year, specifically uh, in summer or in fall, things are not green, right? A lot of the, the grass and the hills uh, are more yellow at that point, right? The, the grass is dry during those seasons. But now, since we just got through the rainy season, uh, we're actually surrounded by green grass, green hills. Uh, everything looks uh, beautiful in that sense. So that's one thing that's actually a positive about the rain here is that it turns everything green, everything's alive, it's good for the land, of course. Uh, so during spring, we get to enjoy uh, grass and, and things like that that is actually alive and not completely dry. So that's uh, pretty significant here. And it also means that there won't be a lot of rain until the winter time. So once spring comes, this means that uh, the rain is usually done for the most part. Uh, obviously, there will be some rainy days throughout the year, but probably just a couple every month at the most, right? Uh, most of the days are going to be either sunny or they might be cloudy, but we won't have a ton of rain and we won't have a ton of storms. Um, so spring in San Diego means that the rain uh, has passed for the most part, right? In English, when we say the phrase for the most part, what we're saying is mostly. For example, if I say for the most part, I'm doing okay. What I'm saying is I'm mostly doing okay. Not 100%, but mostly. So for the most part, this means that there won't be much rain until the winter time. And so the weather becomes comfortable. In my opinion, spring might be the best time to visit San Diego. Uh, I think that it's not too hot, it's not too cold everything's green, there isn't uh, a ton of rain, and so this might be a great time uh, for you to plan a trip to San Diego if that's on uh, your list of destinations where you want to go. All right, how about spring in Guadalajara? This is where I spent most of the last six years. Uh, this is in the middle of Mexico, and during spring in Guadalajara, it is hot. This is the time of year when most people actually complain the most about the hot weather. During the summer, it's hot, but it rains. And so for a lot of people, it's more bearable. In English, when we say that something is bearable, this means that you can handle it. So if it's unbearable, this means that you can't handle it. So for some people, spring in Guadalajara is unbearable because it's very hot. But I think that uh, people tend to exaggerate a little bit when it comes to the hot weather in Guadalajara. 
I've been to some cities in the U.S., for example, that are much hotter than Guadalajara. So I never complain about that. And I like the hot weather. So this is great for me. And uh, during spring, you'll start to see more fruit on the trees. This is cool because we don't uh, see this a lot in the U.S. where uh, tropical fruit or things like that will just start growing on trees uh, that are just uh, on the street, for example. Uh, that's not something you see very often. Uh, people plant their own fruit trees uh, in their backyard, for example, but it's not something that you just see um, uh, walking down the street. Uh, like trees uh, with mangoes or things like that. However, in Guadalajara, you do see this. So you start to see mangoes on the trees, uh, avocados. Uh, I forget exactly when uh, these fruits start appearing on trees, but I think it's usually during the spring, during the late spring maybe. Um, it might be during the early summer, but uh, during this time you start to see some fruit on trees. And right now, uh, at the time of recording this, it's still February, um, but my wife is in Guadalajara right now, and she's eating mango every day. So they already have uh, good, ripe mangoes in Guadalajara. So as you can see, uh, during uh, spring or even before spring, because now it's still the winter, uh, we start to see more fruit and things like that. 